Let's we'll do prayers. I'm sorry to jump put them up on the screens today. It looks like a few of you have Ganji's Mahamudra. Um, so I'll I'll say the prayers loud, and if you know them, join along, and we can do it together. And it's okay, actually, if you mumble. That just is good intention to try to be saying the prayers. And then you might know parts not. I a lot of times like that's how I learned them is I just stopped looking and just tried to keep up with the umze, and and that helped me memorize the prayers. It's helpful to memorize the prayers because um, then I always have them with me, and they are like a narrative meditation and um, and a helpful tool as I go throughout my day. So, first is praise to Shakyamuni Buddha. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed. Teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. The chief of humans were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, flame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you who is free from dust, matchless one endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the dharma that brings peace I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field, endowed with good qualities, to the sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma Refuge, homage to the Great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. This merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant.
Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala together with other pure offerings and wealth and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Idam guru ratna mandala kam niratiyami. The Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the heart of the Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavad was dwelling on massive vultures mountain on Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, Sattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariadeva Putra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, phenomenon, there is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and so on, up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell on the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond air, they reach the end point of nirvana, all the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken into unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared Tate Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate. We'll repeat that.
Gate, 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 pere gate, pere sam gate, bodhi, so, uh, Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train in profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan rose from that concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharidevaputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding their entirety along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Are we live? Is there any Zoom? Oh, you did? Okay, so there is some Zoom. All right, okay. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Matthew. No, I just hold it. So you all can probably hear but this is something for the benefit of the people on Zoom. So what we're going to do today is we're going to read and meditate on something called the Ganges Mahamudra, and you've all got copies of it, and we'll read pieces of it out loud. Um, the commentary that at least I have um, on this text divides the text into seven parts, and so that can actually be collapsed a little bit. And so what I thought we might do is read a piece of it and then sit for um, 12 minutes. I'm just going to use my time on my phone. Okay. Okay, and then sit for 12 minutes on that piece of it, because you can see it's a relatively lengthy poem. Um, and then we'll do another piece of it and then sit on that. And so we'll end up having four different sections with four different sits, each about 12 minutes. Does that seem doable to y'all? And if you need to stand up, you know, and walk around, um, while we're reading, that's fine. You know, just take your text with you and, you know, walk around. If you need a stretch break, because, you know, that's a lot of sitting down. And y'all may have just come from the previous meditation also. So, um, anyway, is that good for everybody? Okay, all right. So... Oh, well, I'm going to read, though, and then we can switch it off. Gotcha. During that, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so the first section, um, the first section, um, Trango Rinpoche, whose commentary is what I'm using, um, is called The View. And so that's a fairly lengthy section, and it's all of that first page and the very first paragraph on the second page. So we're going to read all of that, and then we'll do a short sit, and then we'll come back to it, okay? So this is called The View. Um, oh, and just by the reason we're doing this is there is a retreat, as many of you probably know, going on up in the foothills. And this is what the retreat is on. The retreat is on uh, Mahamudra, uh, on the Ganges Mahamudra. Okay. They say they learned the uh, expressions on Friday. The hardest to kiss them. Kiss the mic. Ugh. All right, I'm kissing the mic. Um, so that says a room of 30, 35 people up there, and this is what they are doing. The, and the retreat, of course, is being led by Lot and Majimpa. So we thought that we would just sort of be in, I don't know, partnership with all those folks. So that's why we're reading this. Um, Malamudra is a type of meditation. Um, it's not all that esoteric, as you will see as you read this. It's easy, but not simple. Um, and I don't know about you, but I do not have mastery of this by any stretch of imagination. 
So this is always a new exercise for me every time I go through this. Okay, so let's read um, until the top of the, the second page. Homage to Roger Dakini. Although Mahmudra Mudra cannot be taught, intelligent and patient Naropa, tolerant of suffering, who is engaged in austerity and is devoted to the guru, fortunate one, do this with your mind. For example, in space, what is resting on what? In one's mind, Mahamudra, there is nothing to be shown. Rest relax in the natural state without attempting to alter anything. If this fetter or bondage thought is loosened, there is no doubt that you will be liberated. For example, it is like looking in the middle of the sky and not seeing anything. In the same way, when your mind looks at your mind, thoughts stop and you attain unsurpassable awakening. For example, just as the vapor that arising from the earth becomes clouds and dissolves into the expanse of space, not going anywhere else and yet not continuing to abide anywhere, in the same way, the agitation of the thoughts that arise from the mind and within the mind is called the instant you see the mind's nature. For example, just as the nature of space transcends color and shape, and just as space is therefore unaffected or unchanged and unobscured by the various colors and shapes that occur within it, in the same way, the essence of your mind transcends color and shape, and therefore is never obscured or affected by the various colors and shapes of virtue and wrongdoing. For example, it is like the luminous heart of the sun, which could never be obscured even by the darkness of a thousand eons. In that way, that luminous clarity that is the essence of the mind is never obscured by the samsara of innumerable kalpas. For example, just as we apply the term empty to space, in fact, there is nothing within space that we are accurately describing by that term. In the same way, although we call the mind clear light or luminosity, simply calling it so does not make it true that there is actually anything within the mind that is the true basis for that designation. In that way, the nature of the mind has from the beginning been like space, and there are no dharmas that are not included within that.
this is it. Yeah. So I hope you were able to take one of those examples and maybe it spoke to you and you were able to do a bit of a visualization. Okay, the other, the next sections that I'm going to collapse together is called the conduct and of prayer of actual meditation and post meditation um, and commitment, the benefit of practice and the defects of practice. So this is all of page two and into the first three paragraphs on page three. And then I'm going to shorten the sit a little bit because I realize we got started a little late. And so I don't I want to be mindful of, of your time. So we'll do six minutes next time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do six minutes next time. So starting with um, the second paragraph on page two. Abandoning all physical actions, the practitioner should rest at ease. Without any verbal utterance, your speech becomes like an echo, sound inseparable from emptiness. Think of nothing whatsoever with a mind and look at the dharmas of the leap. What that means is going from conceptual mind into pure, unadulterated experience, leaping from one to the other. The body is without meaning, empty, like a bamboo stalk. The mind is like the midst of space. It is inconceivable. Rest, relaxed within that, without letting it go or placing it. Rest, relax in that state, without sending it out or placing it in, letting it go or attempting to place it. If mind has no direction, it is Mahamudra. With this, you will attain unsurpassable awakening. Those who follow Tantra and the vehicle of the Paramitas, the Vinyaya and the Sutras, and the various teachings of the Buddha with an attachment for their individual textual traditions and their individual philosophy will not come to see luminous Mahamudra because the scene of that luminosity or clear light is obscured by their intention and attitude. The conceptualized maintenance of vows actually causes you to impair the meaning of samaya. Without mental directness or mental activity, be free of all intentionality. Thoughts are self-arisen and self-pacified, like these lines on the surface of water. If you do not pass beyond the meaning, which is not abiding and not conceptualizing or focusing, then through not passing beyond that, you do not pass beyond or transgress samaya. This is the torch which dispels all obscurity or darkness. With free of all intention, you do not abide in extremes. You will see without exception the meaning of all the Buddha's teachings, or of all the sections of the Buddha's teachings. If you rest in this, you will be liberated from the prison of samsara. If you rest evenly within this, all of your wrongdoing and obscurations will be burned. This is called, for those reasons, the torch of the doctrine. Foolish people who have no interest in this will only be continually carried off by the river of samsara. Those foolish people experiencing intolerable sufferings in lower realms of existence are worthy of compassion. Okay, so we'll sit for six minutes.
Okay, so this next section is how to practice. So this is like the actual instructions on doing it. And we're going to go for the rest of page three and down to the Keho on page four. So this is how to practice. Wishing to attain liberation from intolerable suffering, rely upon a wise guru. When the guru's blessings enter your heart, your mind will be liberated. Those things of samsara are meaningless or pointless, the causes of suffering. And since all of these things that have been done or made are pointless, look at that which is meaningful. If you are beyond all grasping at an object and grasping at a subject, that is the monarch of all views. If there is no distraction, it is the monarch among all meditations. If there is no effort, that is the monarch among all conducts. When there is no hope and no fear, that is the final result and the fruition has been attained or revealed. It is beyond being an object of conceptual focus and the mind's nature is lucidity. There is no path to be traversed, and yet, in that way, you enter the path to Buddhahood. There is no object of meditation, but if you become accustomed to this, you will attain unsurpassed awakening. Thoroughly examine mundane things or the things of the world. If you do, you will see that none of them persist. None of them are capable of permanence. And in that sense, they are like dreams and magical illusions. Dreams and magical illusions are meaningless. Therefore, generate renunciation and abandon mundane concerns. Cut through the bonds of attachment and aversion towards those around you and your surroundings. Meditate in isolated retreats, forests, and so forth, living alone. Remain in that state without meditation. When you attain that which is without attainment, you have attained Mahamudra. For example, if the single root of a tree with a trunk and many branches, leaves, flowers, and fruit is cut, the 10,000 or 100,000 branches will automatically die. In the same way, if the root of mind is cut through, the branches and leaves of samsara will dry up. For example, just as the darkness that is accumulated over a thousand eons is dispelled by the illumination of one lamp or one torch, in the same way, one instant of wisdom of the clear light of one's mind dispels all of the ignorance, wrongdoing, and obscurations accumulated through numerous eons. Another six minutes.
Okay. And this last section is um, by Tonga Rinpoche, labeled the main practice. The first several paragraphs are for those um, of the highest realization. And then finally, we get to for practice for the ones of the median and lesser faculties, which, you know, I, that's where I'm at, um, just to beginners. So this keho or keho just means how wonderful. Keho. The intellect cannot see that which is beyond conceptual mind. You will never realize that which is uncreated through created dharmas. If you wish to attain or realize that which is beyond the intellect and is uncreated, then scrutinize your mind and strip awareness naked. Allow the cloudy water of thought to clarify itself or to clear itself. Do not attempt to stop or create appearances. Leave them as they are. If you are without acceptance and rejection of external appearances, all that appears and exists will be liberated as mudra. The all basis is unborn, and without that unborn all basis, abandon or relinquish habits, wrongdoing, and obscurations. Therefore, do not fixate or reckon. Rest in the essence of the unborn or in the unborn nature. In that state, appearances are fully apparent. But within that experience of vivid appearance, allow concepts to be exhausted or to dissolve. Complete liberation from all conceptual extremes is the supreme monarch of views. Boundless vastness is the supreme monarch of meditation. Being directionless and utterly impartial is the supreme monarch of conduct. Self-liberation beyond expectation or hope is the supreme result or fruition. For a beginner, it is like a river with a fast current running through a narrow bed or a narrow defile. In the middle, or after that, it becomes like the gentle current of river Ganges. In the end, it is like the flowing of all rivers into the mother ocean, or it is like the meeting of mother and child of all the rivers. Rivers of little intelligence, if they find they cannot remain in that state, may apply or hold the technique of the breathing and emphasize the essence of awareness. Some techniques or branches, such as gaze and holding the mind, Tighten awareness until it stays put. Exerting tension or effort until awareness comes to rest in that state or in its nature. If you rely upon Kama Mudra, the wisdom of bliss and emptiness will arise. Enter into the union having consecrated the upaya or method and the prajna or knowledge. Slowly let it fall or send it down, coil it, turn it back, and lead it to its proper place. Finally, spread it or cause it to pervade your whole body. If there is no attachment or craving, the wisdom of bliss and emptiness will appear. You will possess longevity without white hair, and you will be as healthy as the waxing moon. Your complexion will be lustrous, and you will be as powerful as a lion. You will quickly attain the common cities or attainments and you will come to the light in or attain the supreme city as well. These instructions of the essential point of Mahamudra merely abide in the hearts of worthy or fortunate beings. Okay. So that's the Ganges Mahamudra. Yeah, so being mindful of time and the fact that it's Easter. You all probably have got like Easter dinner to go to, yeah. Right? We can go Easter egg hunting. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. So we'll just go ahead and wrap it up and huh? not supposed to what? Oh. No. <laughs> not I know, I know, but no, please vote. <laughs> 
whichever way your preferences lie, please vote. <laughs> There's other things, right? Um, I think first we have to like get to the place where we legitimately don't have preferences. Well, and then it's like, you know, well, well, I think then uh, you'll have the wisdom to know what to do for yourself. Yeah, you're right. And then tell Ben, please vote. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. What's the actual word? Say where? Sorry. So you're saying? Oh, oh, yeah. You know that that is. You're right. It's it's a translation issue. Um, Like, think of it in terms of grammar school, middle school, and high school, right? For those of us that are still in grammar schools, that's kind of what it means. But no, it's not an insult. It's just a, it's a translation issue. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, actually, like, almost even really advanced teachers, when they get to parts like this, they're always like, and, and those with little intelligence, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They always do that, right? So, yeah, it's just kind of a, a way of being humble, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Comments, questions? Thank you for having comments and questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, closing prayers. Dedication. Do you merit these virtuous actions? May I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. And encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chinrasik Tensin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Blessed a magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avaloka Teshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Jushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Lo Song Dragpa, I make request at your holy feet. Thank you. Do you have any announcements? Does anyone have any announcements? Yes. I think we have programs every day of the week. Please come see us. Yeah, it's all online too. I won't go through the schedule right now, but it's really robust. Yeah. We're doing a lot here. And um and now the facilitators are teacher are paid. So if you would be so generous as to provide Donna, it's really appreciated. It just goes to help us pay the mortgage, keep the lights on, keep the fridge stocked with uh seltzer water. But you're all welcome too. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much, Susan. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Setting it up. Let's get a seat too.